Welcome to the Survivor Breakdown with Jolene. Welcome to the Survivor Breakdown with Jolene. That's me. Hey guys, welcome to the Survivor Breakdown with Jolene, where I break down all things season 38 of Survivor on CBS. If you've never been to my channel before, make sure you hit that subscribe and also smash the bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. Also, give it a, a thumbs up. Give it a like. What's, what's it gonna hurt? Throw your likes into the world. All right, I just got done watching episode three of Survivor season 38. I'm gonna break it down. The title of this episode, I'm peeking at my computer, is Betrayals Are Going to Get Exposed. And this was another great Survivor episode. This season has been so awesome. So let's just jump in and get started. So we start the episode. We finally find out that Keith went on the boat and is keeping going with his Survivor journey, which I'm so happy because last episode we left and Keith it was like praying to God, like, what should I do? What should I do? And uh, he decided to go forward, which I thought he was going to do. And thank goodness, because Reem has been at the edge of extinction on that island for six nights, I think. She's wrapped up in a blanket. She has a tiny little fire. She's miserable. It already looks like she lost like 10 pounds. She says she hasn't eaten in days. So Keith is there and Keith is like, okay, cool. Yeah, this is going to be great. It's going to be great. And Reem's like, it's horrible. It's awful. You think you're going to eat? Ha 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 ha. You're not going to eat. But at least they have company. Keith thinks he's going to get sleep and Reem's like, I've been sleeping on this board. Nails up. And so Keith is like, oh my gosh, this is awful. I, I should have maybe just gone to the hotel or you know, where they give you all the pizza and you, they, they weigh you and they talk about your journey. But I'm happy to see them reunited. But again, Reem falls immediately into her motherly pattern of wanting to care for Keith because you know, Keith doesn't have all the outdoorsy skills that he needs. I mean, poor Keith couldn't swim. So now he's, you know, they got to make fire. They got to find food. All these things have to happen. And now Reem's just like, I feel like I have to protect this guy. And I'm like, no, Reem. I mean, yeah, per, you know, I, I understand. You're a mother. It's, you know, instinctive in you. But uh, that's how you got out of your game last time. Then the survivor gods send them a message in a bottle and tell them that they have to find stairs on this island. And Reem's like, I've been all over this damn island. I don't know where the stairs are. Uh, so they start off looking for the stairs that they have to walk around the whole damn island, it looks like. And finally, they're able to find stairs and they have to climb up these stairs, which look so high and so steep from the camera angle. It looks like they were hiking for, I don't know, two days, but they probably were hiking for 20 minutes. But Reem is exhausted because she has zero calories in her body right now. They get to the top of the staircase and there lies rice, beautiful rice, and probably just like salivating looking at this rice. Now there's not a lot of rice, they said. And they also were reminded that the edge of extinction island, you have to fight for every little thing you get, even if it's this much rice. So every time they want rice, they gotta make that trek up to the stairs. If it was me, I would just move my camp right up by the rice and be like, is there a rule that says I have to have a camp down there? Like I said, this is only my second season ever watching Survivor, but I would just be like, Keith, pack up the planks with the rusty nail. Grab that thing I've been covering myself with, which I think is a cover for an old boat. And let's go to the top of the stairs where we can just chill out there and just wait for rice to fall in our mouths. I don't think they can do that. So they have to, unfortunately, make that big trek every time they want a little bit of rice, but at least they have food, at least they have each other. Just made me feel better knowing that Reem has someone because I was worried about her. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna give props to Reem. I don't know why, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. I'm gonna give props to Reem because she has lasted six nights by herself with the snakes and the spiders and she hasn't really made much of a shelter for herself. At least I couldn't tell. I know she was braiding some banana leaves, but I don't know where those went. Maybe she uses them as a fan or teepee. But uh, she's lasted six nights, which is pretty impressive. So way to go, Reem. We go back to the two tribes and they are doing a reward challenge. And this reward challenge is very interesting. They have to push a wheelbarrow and they have all these bags in there and they have to use a a slingshot and then they have to like slingshot the bags into these targets and knock them over and you know Joe superpower hipster ponytail Joe he's ready to go like Joe could do all these competitions I feel like by himself everyone's just kind of holding him back and then we have war dog which the more I watch this show I'm not comfortable calling him war dog but apparently that's what he wants to be called and then uh, we have old Jared from Subway, which is Devin's and then David, and they're struggling. I mean, they're doing okay, 
But uh, Rick Devins, he really, um, I mean, he's holding up. Now that we got rid of Keith, the next weakest player is definitely Rick Devins when it comes to the physical activity. And they kind of run into the other team and they have to make it through this obstacle course. I mean, Joe literally lifts up the wheelbarrow and dumps out all of the little sandbags that they're going to shoot in the slingshot. And Rick Devins and War Dog and David couldn't even lift it up. They start picking it up with their hand and I'm just like, oh man. Everyone's talking about Keith should have learned to swim before coming on the show. Well, how about Rick Devin should have maybe done some bench presses or something because he needs, even little David, I mean, he's so tiny. They gotta be able to lift stuff. So War Dog's just like, oh, get out of my way. Uh, and he's in his underpants. And can we talk about how a lot of the survivor people already they're getting droopy drawers. I mean, all their underpants are just sagging on their booties. They're losing quite a bit of weight or it's the water that's pulling them down or just wearing them every day. But I'm seeing a lot of droopy drawers. And that's why I'm just, I always wonder every season, like, couldn't they just let them pack a swimsuit? I don't know, some swimsuit bottoms or something because some of these underpants were not good choices. I mean, last season we had Dr. Fancy bra and she had to, I mean, I hate wearing a bra period. They're so uncomfortable, but she didn't even pack herself a nice sports bra. I mean, the uh, some of the best bras we see this season for comfort uh, is by Wentworth. It's because she's a vet and she knows because you have Lauren and other girls are coming in with regular bras and lacy underpants. I mean, I would be looking straight comfort and that's why we know Kelly Wentworth is truly a legend because she came in with the comfiest of bras and some little shorts rather than having to prance around in her underpants so she came ready and comfortable now Aubrey I don't know what she was thinking because she's another one that came with some bikini cuts and I mean you get those shorts girl and then it's just much comfortable you get a lot of suction kind of sucks you in <laughs> and then you don't have to worry about you know your butt cheeks hanging out or getting you know if it gets too big you can kind of roll them over so Wentworth is killing the game when it comes to her underpants but a lot of the guys a lot of their uh, boxer briefs are just droopy drawers in it now and uh, especially David poor David he's got quite the droopy drawers going on but yeah I just always wonder like gosh I mean I know they're making it look like you know you gotta survive on what you come in with but like let them throw in a swimmer suit here or there. The Manu tribe is actually killing it now because they pull in Chris and Chris is like a Joe but for the other side and he's slingshotting these bags and he knocks down every target. Now the other team they had Julia step in because they tried little sweet Gavin but Gavin couldn't make it and Julia knocks them down but in the end Manu Tribe won and this is their first victory and I think they really needed this for their team morale so it was fun to see them actually win something because they are losing a lot. So they get to pick their luxury reward items. They can either have comfort which is like pillows and blankets uh, or they get chickens and of course they pick chickens because everyone's going to pick chickens. A part of me you know I know this is going to sound crazy but I was kind of thinking I would like a pillow and a blanket just to kind of wrap up because you spend so much time probably just sitting there. I mean, I'd be okay with the rice. I don't see how bland chicken, do they give them spices with the chicken, is going to taste any better than bland rice. I mean, I know you need it for like nutrients, protein, I guess. Uh, but it's like, what's one chicken? I mean, they get three chickens and they're going to, I think, keep two for eggs. I don't, I'll be honest with you guys, I don't really know how chickens work. I eat chicken. I feel very much like Wendy in this episode <laughs> because I'm blissfully uh, and voluntarily ignorant when it comes to this type of thing. I should no, but apparently there's a rooster and then there's two more and uh, last uh, year when I posted this someone said chickens don't lay eggs or root or I don't remember but someone got really upset but I'm sorry I know I'm from the Midwest but I do not know a lot about farming and farm animals and the stuff that I eat but I don't know what just even if they cooked all three chickens I mean that's not gonna do that much you're gonna get for all those people where they got seven people left they're gonna get maybe a meal out of it. I mean, that's just uh, me. You guys feel free to comment and be like, you're wrong. You can actually do this. And well, you know, feel free to school me on the whole chicken thing. Uh, but in a nice way, please. But I was thinking those pillows are going to last all season. Yeah, they might get wet, but those blankets, it might be nice to have a little bit of comfort. I mean, you're already getting rice and you can find other things like bugs and flowers and the pineapple. I saw they had some fruit there. So I don't really know what the chicken, as far as eggs go, yeah, that's awesome. If you got a chicken, that's going to lay some eggs. But this is where I kind of side with Wendy. So they get the chickens. They're excited for their win. They go back, and Wendy realizes she has hurt her foot, and it looks bad. She's never broken anything. She's very worried. And then you got this chicken, and they're all talking around these chickens like, yeah, I can't wait to kill it. Can't wait to eat it, which, yes, I'm a hypocrite too because I do eat meat, and I do eat chicken. I prefer chicken tenders. 
but you know, they can't make a chicken tender up there. So for me, I'd be like, uh, oh, okay, I don't wanna kill the chicken. I'd rather just eat the eggs. I kind of sided with Wendy and I'm probably the only person in America who sided with Wendy, but I get what she means because we don't, you know, we're very lucky in this country, a lot of us, where uh, it's like a point of privilege where we don't have to see where our food comes from. It just comes to us and we're like, thank you, food gods. But I kind of understood what Wendy was saying. And when, you know, you're, you're staring at this animal in the eye, I don't ever want to stare at something I'm about to eat. I've never had to do that. Where my in-laws, they have these awesome big parties and they make carnitas and the carnitas are so delicious. But sometimes the pig will be there. And my husband's like, you're not going to like that because it's not what I'm used to. It's not what I grew up with. Uh, but to them, it's like, yeah, this is a farm. That's the animal. You eat the animal. So that's how everyone was looking at Wendy. Like, what's wrong with you? you eat chicken. You're a hypocrite. She's like, yeah, but I don't eat chickens that I like befriend, you know? And that's how I feel like I would be. I see a little animal. I'm like, oh, you're so cute. You're so cute. And they're like, all right, who's going to murder it? And they're like, nobody murder the chickens. But I actually don't think Wendy's crazy at all. I actually really enjoy her. So she's kind of trying to think of a way that she can sabotage this whole chicken thing, which yeah, is kind of a jerk move to her, you you know, tribe, but it's kind of funny too for the viewers to watch and they're taking it really personally. War Dog's like, we're eating this chicken because War Dog says, okay, I got these blue boxer briefs. I like to hug Wentworth and I only like to associate with the women. The War Dog's just like, I don't understand what you're saying. You're a hypocrite. And Wendy, this is what I love about Wendy. She admits, she says, yes, I am a hypocrite. And he's like, then, well, if you want to be friends with me outside of this island, you need to be a vegetarian the rest of your life. Oh, okay, War Dog. I'm sure your friendship is such a gift to Wendy that that is going to be the thing that's going to keep her a vegetarian. I don't think she cares if you're her friend off this island. First of all, you're probably old enough to be her dad. Second of all, you're kind of a dick. Oh, my hype man husband, Chell, just entered the building, you guys. Chell. Subscribe. What else? Listen to my wife promote herself. What else? Um, if you see her on the street, give her a nice compliment because she looks really sweet in her hair. And I love her. Aw, thanks, hype man husband, Chell. No problem. That's a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome home. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm not that impressed with War Dog because my husband is all nice and stuff. And, uh, yeah. I like War Dog. You like, you know which one? You did watch the episode yeah, with me and he one saw War Dog. The, stole the flint. The girl that stole the flint, War Dog? No, Wendy stole the flint. Oh, War Dog got mad at her. I don't like War Dog. We like Wendy. Wendy. I thought it was hilarious. So Wendy ends up stealing the flint, like my husband just told you guys, and then she disappears off and everyone's just pissed. You know, Lawrence pissed, Wentworth's pissed, like, don't do this to me, guys. Like, they need this food. And I get it. They're hungry. They want protein, you know, and War Dog's like, we need this because we're, you know, for the next competition so that we could win. It's like, I don't think a couple bites of chicken is going to let you guys win. You guys have bigger problems than that. So Wendy is a adorably out there just laughing, holding this flint. I mean, Wendy's great television for Survivor. And she also pulls her weight in comps. It'd be one thing if Wendy was sabotaging comps and being kind of a, a douche and not being a team player, but she really is a team player. I mean, there was a, for the immunity competition, she was swimming with a hurt foot. So they send uh, Rick Devins and David over to do the dirty work and find out from Wendy if in fact she did steal the flint. And she plays it off pretty good. Her acting skills are like, no, Chris had it this morning. I don't, Hmm, not sure what could have happened to it. And then she's like, yes, I have saved the chickens. And she's so excited that she saved these chickens. She couldn't save Reem. She couldn't save Keith. But gosh darn it, she's going to save those damn chickens, you guys. I don't know why I said darn it and then said damn but I did that. So while they're over there asking her about the Flint, uh, they decide to talk strategy. And they're like, what are you thinking this next round? Do you think we can go after Wentworth? And Wendy's basically like, if it keeps me from going home, we'll go Wentworth. We're fine. Because Wendy gets it. I like Wentworth and I like Wendy. I wish they could team up and both stay, but that's not how it's playing out. And I also realize that these new players to Survivor, they have to ultimately get rid of the older players. Otherwise, they're going to lose. Not all of them are realizing this because I think War Dog is definitely becoming a fangirl for Wentworth. Uh, he loves hanging out with Wentworth. We see him hugging Wentworth. He's all about Wentworth. And this is not going to be what's best for his game going forward. It would be best for him to stick playing with Chris, having different alliances. So then we go over and check on the Kama Tribe. And I was really sad to see that they weren't having a Ron Clark from Ron Clark Academy dance party. I loved it last time when Ron Clark was like, yeah, get it. And everyone was dancing. He was grinding on Aubrey. It was awesome and hilarious, but they're not doing a dance party anymore. It seems that now they're starting to get to business. And the uh, Kama Tribe knows that they have to get out 
Aubrey and they have to get out Joe eventually. The only person that doesn't seem to be on the same team of let's get the returning players out is Aurora. Aurora the divorce attorney. Aurora is a little infatuated smitten kitten with Joe and she admitted that even the first episode. She's like, hey, I'm gay but I'm still here all day for Joe and his beautiful man bun. So she's kind of teamed with Aubrey and Joe and Victoria and Ron Clark from Ron Clark Academy are out in the water talking about what are we going to do? What's going to happen if we do lose this next immunity challenge? And what they don't realize is Joe, we see, is close by, okay? He's a little already too close to be talking about this. But then Joe makes his magic. I don't know if Joe is a wizard. I didn't watch Joe's season, but it seems like Joe can do anything. Uh, he all of a sudden is right behind Victoria as Victoria is talking to Ron Clark from Ron Clark Academy saying, yeah, Joe and Aubrey, I think are a package deal. They're a team. And as they're saying that, Joe's just bent over in the water, you know, like shucking clams. Is that how, how you say it? I don't know. He just got done building another condominium for them and starting everyone their own fire because he's amazing. Uh, is like, who, what? What do me and Aubrey have? What are you guys talking about? And Victoria's like, oh, shit. Um, you know, like a, you guys are like a team. You go to together. You're uh, good people. And Joe's like, well, you know, I think, and he says something about a barrel. And then Victoria, you can tell she's just trying to get out of it. It's that horrible moment. I think we've all been there where you're caught talking about something or someone you're not supposed to be talking about by that person. And they're like, what'd you say? And you're like, I, nothing. What'd you say? I feel like I finally realized, because like I said, I didn't watch Joe's season, why Joe didn't win. Because uh, right there, he didn't even, he realized, but he didn't realize. So I feel like his physical game is on point, but his social game and strategic wise, I, I don't think he's there. Cause he's just like, well, you know, it's the bottom of the barrel and uh, you know, well, I mean, it's a barrel. And he starts talking about a barrel and I would be running back to Aubrey going and be like, code red, code red, they're going for us. Definitely, we gotta start making some alliances with these other people, but we can't come on as strong as you did last time, Aubrey, because last time you were feeding everyone the same line and they compared notes. These kids are talking and we gotta take them out. But instead, Joe's just like, I'm just gonna put my pony back in and I'll just uh, cavalierly discuss this with Aubrey and Aurora, our puppet. And that's exactly, what he did. I mean, they didn't seem to freak out as much, which you don't want to freak out too much, but Joe, they're coming for you, bro. Like, you need to do something. You need to start working some magic. You need to get out there and run and start looking for an immunity idol. And that's exactly what uh, our friend Aubrey, the returning player, did. She literally ran in her bikini briefs out into the jungle like, I will find this immunity idol because she knows that she's screwed if she doesn't have an immunity idol. And she's been looking for this. She said she's done so much in her survivor career, except for win and find immunity idol. And we all know, we talk about this every episode, women find far less immunity idols than men do on survivor. So we see her just digging and she's talking and it's this very like emotional moment. Survivor does a great job of building up these emotional moments as you watch where I'm like, I don't want, I don't dislike Aubrey, but it's like, I don't necessarily want her to find it. But now they've built up her story and like, she needs this. And I'm like, yeah, Aubrey, find that immunity idol. And I'm crying <laughs> watching her and then she finds it and then she starts crying and then I'm crying and I'm about to cry again. And I, it, survivor producers and editors you you outdo yourself with some of this editing because you make me care about people I didn't think I cared about and all of a sudden I'm like good for you Aubrey good for you that was great because Lauren's found one and you found one and that's two women and this is great this is amazing so then we go into the immunity challenge it is quite a challenge uh Wendy her foot is hurt but that doesn't matter she's still going to be one of the swimmers so you have three people in a boat they have to jump grab these keys and then the swimmers have to literally be tied to ropes and swim the boat back to land. So basically then the three people that were in the boat and each tribe for the Manu tribe, we have Kelly Wentworth and David. We have two of the returners and we have Lauren. And then on the uh, Kama tribe, we have Aubrey, we have Julia, and we have Ron Clark from Ron Clark Academy. I mean, you have the ultimate teacher on this team. You also have Aubrey who looks pretty smart with puzzles and Julia as well. So they're trying to put together this boat wheel. I forgot the exact name of it, but they're putting it together and right away the Manu tribe just shits the I mean, they aren't putting the right pieces together. It's not working. 
working. Lauren's getting really frustrated, like a 21-year-old, 23-year-old frustration. She's like, what are you doing? Looking at David, and David's in his droopy drawers like, I don't know, I'm... I'm scared and Wentworth, I mean, everyone's frustrated, but the Kama Tribe makes it look so easy. They put it all together, they got it on, they put it up, they spin it, and then they win immunity for the third time in a row. So Julie had just handed back immunity to Jeff, and then they take it right back, and it was awesome to see, but I was sad for the Manu Tribe because I'm like, three losses? Come on, you guys. It was... It was pretty bad, especially since they did a kick-ass job with the swimming and they really pulled their weight there. But David and Lauren and Wentworth, mm, they did not do very well together. And it was a lot about communication and working together. And I think when you have the two returning players, they're already kind of at each other, uh, but they don't say it out loud. But we know they're, they're both not necessarily teaming up where Aubrey and Joe seem to be teaming up. David and Wentworth are taking a completely different approach where David's like, I want you gone. And Wentworth's looking at him like, I want you gone too. I think Wentworth would be a little more open to work with David, but David's like, mm, it's me and Rick Devins for life, Subway for life. And he doesn't want to work with Wentworth at all. He knows he's got to get rid of her. So I think maybe that's where a little bit of the difference was between the two teams. So now Manu's got to go back and figure out what they are going to do. It seemed like this was going to be the time to take Wentworth out yet again. We were going to try again to take Wentworth out. Now I like Wentworth. I do. And I like Wendy. I don't want either of them to go home. But if I was playing this game, I would definitely send Wentworth home. Okay? She's too good. She's too big of a threat. She had her chance. Let's move on.org. And this is what Rick Devins and David and Wendy have planned. Uh, and they tell Chris. And Chris is, I like Chris. I said this in my last video. I think he's super awesome. He's positive. He's strong. Uh, he's okay to look at. I mean, there's a lot of good things Chris has going for him. And he looked out for Keith. I think he has a good heart. And so basically David says, we're going to take Wentworth out. And Chris is like, okay. And David says, you can't tell War Dog because we tried this before. And what happened before? When we told War Dog, War Dog talked Chris out of it because War Dog is going to get War Dog's way because that's how War Dog is. Uh, I hate having to say War Dog. What's his real name? I don't know. I'm going to call, call him Baldy McBalderson Bossy. Uh, so Baldy McBalderson Bossy, he, uh, he can't know. And Chris is like, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable because Chris, despite being a sales guy, has like a lot of integrity. I expected him to come on the show and be like, it's just a game. I don't. I don't owe anybody anything, but he feels like he owes War Dog, and like him and War Dog are a tight pair. Little does he know, mm, no, War Dog would rather play with the girls. Uh, and I think it's not for the reasons because they're necessarily strong. I think he's a smitten kitten for Wentworth and also playing with a uh, young, attractive Lauren. This is just what I'm going off by seeing the type of person War Dog is, okay? So don't hate me in the comments. So Chris is like, all right, uh, I don't know, but okay. It's like, just don't tell him. We'll go in there. We'll make it happen. We'll just do it and apologize later, which makes a lot of sense. But oh no, Chris puts his jeans on and he heads out to the beach and he tells War Dog. And War Dog right away, like Chris wants to do this out of respect for War Dog. He feels like they're working together, but they're not. War Dog's like, in his head, he, he's like, well, tell me what you're thinking. Yeah, totally, bro. Open up to me. No problem. And he tells them. And immediately, War Dog goes and tells Wentworth because he's like, I trust Kelly more than I do Chris. And poor Chris doesn't know he thinks he's doing the right thing. And War Dog's like, all right. And he goes and tells Wentworth. So what does Wentworth do? Because Wentworth is smart. She is a great player. She's like, you know what? You're come from me. I'm going to get you. So she flips the script. They flip the script and decide that now Chris has to go home. Well, I don't want Chris to go home. I'm just thinking, oh, God, Chris, couldn't you have just, I mean, his name's War Dog. I wouldn't uh, trust anyone named War Dog. Unless you tell me your real first name, like Adam, I'm not going to trust you. I'm not calling any grown man dog. That's what I'm saying, except for Snoop Dogg, because he earned it, you know? But other than that, Nate Dogg, RIP. So unfortunately, Chris, most likely, we're going into uh, tribal council. Chris is going to be blindsided because then War Dog goes off, or Baldy McBalderson Bossy goes off to Rick Devins from Subway and uh, David with the droopy drawers and tells them, hey, Chris came up to me and David's like, yeah, you know, can anyone listen to me? I have some experience in this, but no, they didn't listen to droopy drawers. And so now they're like, I guess we might have to take out Chris, even though David wants to take Wentworth out so bad. So then we go to tribal council. There's a lot of talk. You know, David starts saying he's going to go after someone who has a good social game, and then Kelly Wentworth is like, you talking about me? Because you better not be talking about me, because I will switch this on you with just my eyes, because I can control War Dog and Lauren and everyone here besides Wendy. 
Uh, and then War Dog's like, I don't understand what he's saying either. So far, Chris isn't catching on to anything. Rick Devins blabs about something. Uh, Wendy says she feels like it's a pyramid and she's on the bottom of the pyramid. Uh, Jeff is just saying, wow, this is a lot of strategy. And they're basically trying to make the best out of being losers. I mean, they said that they feel like losers is that they are ahead of the Kama tribe and that now they've had to strategize a lot, but they're doing a lot of strategizing. And in the end, Wentworth gets some votes, but Chris goes home and Chris does not look happy. He's just like, really? And War Dog's like, hmm. Sorry, bro. I'm in it for the babes. But then Chris comes to the crossroads where he has to decide. Will he go home? Is game be over? Or will he get on the boat? And Chris, without hesitation, he's like, screw these guys. I'm getting on the boat. And I loved it. I was like, Chris is my new favorite. And I'm kind of excited for Chris to go to the edge of extinction because now he can help Keith and Reem. They have like a superhero coming in. It's like they have Joe, but like hotter Joe is coming to help them. For that reason, I was happy to see Chris. And I think there's this fire in Chris now. Before Chris was the nice guy and Chris was playing the nice game and he was believing people. And now he's like, screw all of you. I'm going on this boat and I will be back. And I think Chris has a good chance, if that's how they're playing it, of coming back. I think he will because this, going to the edge of extinction is going to give him a lot of survivor street credit. He's going to learn a lot. He's going to be forced to kind of help Reem and Keith. Um, so I think it'll, it'll be good for him. And so for that, I'm excited. But I was sad to see Chris go, but I hope he comes back and I hope he takes out War Dog. That is my dream. So, so far, they have not been able to get Kelly Wentworth out. Kelly Wentworth, you are killing it, girl. Keep it up. Keep it up. If these people are too dumb to get rid of you, that's not your problem. That's their problem. So that's my breakdown of Survivor, you guys. Another great episode. Hopefully you enjoyed my breakdown, my rants, and my hype man husband, Chell. Subscribe. Yes. Uh, so please leave your comments. I love geeking out with you guys. I love hearing who you like, what you think. Let's talk Survivor. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with all your Survivor. Loving friends, family, enemies, war dogs, whatever you gotta do. So thank you guys for watching and I'll be back very soon with another Survivor Breakdown with Jolene. Bye!